Hello guys, my name is Ginyu2007 from YouTube, also known as Pito Royo, and I'm here with DJ Bad Influence, who hasn't been a DJ in many, many years, but uh, Jonathan Hardy, how are you tonight, man? What's going on with your uh, bad self? I'm just old. And wouldn't you know it when you start talking, I lose you? <laughs> Technology, man, it just flopped That's on funny. me. Yeah, now you're good. Now you're back. <laughs> <laughs> I so, never left. I know, but according to my video recording, you were like. <laughs> so, Retro World Expo 2023. We are a day after. Dude, good, bad, and the ugly. What do you think? Well,. This this year also marks. I've been to more than half of them now. Yeah. So, you know, being a being a bit of a regular and everything, uh, it was mad cool. Um, I'm not sure what the wrestling part, <laughs> <laughs> but it it seems to be a big hit and it brings people through. Yeah. So yeah, you know. Whatever you know, the, I think um, the, the whole popularity of this cosplay wrestling thing is uh, it, it, it just seems to work for some reason, people just seem to dig it. And I, and I could see that because, like, that girl that I told you I know, my friend Joanna, she yeah, uh, she's also into the cosplay thing too, so it and she's into wrestling, so uh, I guess I, I can see the crossover there. Yeah, it's 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 very the, interesting. Um, I did watch a lot more of the esports this year, okay. So, uh, what did you think, man? Who who stood so, out? As in the background, you know. Cool, except for the, the one that really stood out was this one dude playing Tetris, man. I mean, this dude was like leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else in the room. Uh -huh. He, um, I forgot how his brain works, which was pretty interesting. So, what I think he's doing is, is I think at first, you know, he drops the first piece, right? Yep. And then... I think he looks at the next piece, and from that point forward, I don't think he's looking at the grid at all. I think he's counting, like, with his left thumb, how many clicks to go left or right, and yeah. then his right thumb, how many clicks to turn a piece uh -huh. to land it where he wants, because he's he was not, not at no point was he, like, he looked at the next piece. As soon as the next the, the piece before that appeared, it dropped. He slammed it down. Yep. So it's like he looked at it. So, I mean, I think he's just doing all that in his head, like, the way he, some peeps used to do Rubik's Cube back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're not even, yeah, like, yeah. looking at it, and they, they've got that mental picture or whatever. Uh -huh. But he was, like, insane. I mean, watching him go down, and, like, you know, he finishes to the point to where, you know, it finally gives him a score, and the other three dudes are playing for, like, another two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, like, I mean, the brain is, man, wild. Um, I can, a second competition I thought was pretty cool. I don't want to get a little, I can, uh, and hold then, on, hold uh, on, hold on. You, you broke up a bit. So, the Tekken stuff was pretty cool. The Tekken 7 I, tournament. Yep, yep. You know, we know someone okay. who's supposedly Going very skilled at uh, Tetris. I wonder how, how uh, Kelly would fare at this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know, man. This dude was definitely like <laughs> global caliber. Oh, yeah, man. Definitely. Definitely up there. And then so, I get distracted by my favorite candy cabs, which were there this year. Yeah, that was that was great. And then Chris, the owner of the uh, of Retro World or co-owner or whatever, he uh, made a comment on one of my Facebook posts. That was like a last minute thing, and I go, "What?" That should have been a first minute thing. <laughs> that whole row of candy cabs was amazing. Yeah, you and, know, and it's as funny as it may sound because we're not on the West Coast, so we don't get to see a lot of that stuff like West Coasties do. Yeah, yeah. so. For me to see a row of candy cabs like that is like a thing of beauty. That they've always been my favorite. Um, I don't know if it's because I like fight, playing fighters and uh, and um, first person shooters, and uh -huh. or, um, uh -huh. especially like um, vertical shooters. And but those cabs have always been like my favorite. The screens are huge. The audio is good. You can sit down while you're playing. I mean, oh yeah. It's, it's, uh, which I, which as I get older is a bigger perk, of course. But you know, nah, uh, I just I get so distracted by those. One of our buddies actually fared uh, fared pretty well in the frag tournament. Adrian came in at uh, fourth place. 
Yeah, I can't. I watched him. I can't remember when I saw him at part of it because we also did the street pass thing, which I'll comment on in a minute. But yeah, yeah. Um, when I went over there, he was on one of the Atari ones, and the look at his face was like, "How the hell am I gonna do this one?" Because <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like his like normal shit yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I saw him going around. I thought that was pretty cool. How uh, you know, you got to play a bunch of different games, so you can't be good at just one game. You got to no, get good at different it. generations yep, of yep. consoles and stuff like that. <laughs> And the Street Pass part was, uh, so he had made a comment about Street Pass on the social group for Retro World Expo, and which we all have on Facebook. And then I had made a comment, and then I had fixed uh, our buddy Aaron's uh, 3DS. Yep. So we had that there as well. And then a bunch of other people had chimed in, so we brought for the for the two days, and I think I made like 14, 15 contacts in two days, though I haven't checked it actually since... I actually haven't checked Sundays yet, so I can oh, go back okay. and take a look. Yeah, you should. I, I think it's still on. I just think it's in sleep mode right now. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, we got a bunch. got a few states. Of course, uh, I had expectedly picked up uh, Arizona. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mutual friend of ours. I know, right? Adrian there. <laughs> I guess he wanted to make but, his uh, then, stand out a bit more. <laughs> yeah, you know. And then I went to the, you know, but the panels were good as always. Oh, yes, um, definitely. You know, I, I think... balanced out. I got to meet some people that, you know, I've either chatted with or interacted with online. I always see, like, a few people I consider friends now, like Rob from Retro RGV. Yep, yep. Bob's, been, Bob's a good guy. He brought Tito out from Macho Nacho Productions. Yeah, Macho Nacho. Was yeah. actually there, but kind of hidden last year. And because uh, he had a mask on and everything last year, so this year he's being more sociable and everything. And we got to talk it a little bit, and uh, gave me ideas for uh, your GameCube, of course. Okay. And then uh, doing that mod oh, for your GameCube you know so you can run your I, um, player. I saw I saw one of the uh, one of the contraptions. They were selling it at one eighty, I believe. The whole you know with with the disc and everything. Yeah. 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 So that one seemed to be at 180. That's what I saw. It sold dirt cheap. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you can get that player dirt cheap. It's that disc. Getting it's that it disc. With the disc is like yep. the holy grail. That's right. And uh, with um, when you're running the uh, Pico Pi or Pico Boost or whatever uh -huh. uh, mod, which is, which is Raspberry Pi Pico board, uh -huh. what happens is you could load Swiss into it. Swiss will allow you to access the drive without having to have that disc. Nice. And so I think what's really neat about this is this whole mod is less than getting the the Game Boy player with the disc, but you get the benefits of all the other benefits that you're going to have with that particular mod. So you can play North American games, Japanese games, which, of course, you and I have a collection of both. Yep. So I thought that mod was pretty cool. So we're talking about that a little bit. Then... um the last thing I think of is it's just it's like it's almost outgrown itself like it needs more room to grow now because, I would uh, say this is from a perspective of what they're using currently because there's plenty of room to use more right you know because I mean, some people don't know the convention center you know some people hearing this have never been there before so we need we right. need we need to be clear on this that this is you know it's it is not because they have outgrown the space that they currently have it's just that the parts that they are using to a certain extent yes and to that I fully concur. So, I mean, and that, but you know maybe that might also mean like going to a different spot too. Who knows? It's just I mean yeah. the convention center is very convenient. It's a nice spot. The uh, the breakout rooms are always really nice. Oh yeah. You know, um, you couldn't do this expo like the way they do a lot of cons at certain hotels and stuff it just there's just no, not enough space in not enough space correct most hotels to do that sort of thing um but i think it's very interesting that both the the, the, the other big expo in the area is long island retro gaming expo yeah and they got started the same year i didn't realize that they oh, both okay. started the same year and they're they're both pretty big here in the northeast so what i like about it is people always focus so much on like west coast stuff you know, Portland and SoCal and yep, stuff yep. like that, but 
the northeast is hitting and we got some good good gaming conventions up here and indeed you know up that it's that that there's room to even expand so so was there anything that we would be considered uh ugly or bad about the event besides paying just, you know so much for convention food <laughs> um you're not close enough to like put a main street to go grab bro i mean you can walk you and i could because we know the area but if, yeah. if you're not from the area you don't know these things i know <laughs> um, you're not going to be doing that um i know that some jackass like stole something from the from Spruce's store uh -huh. that was there but then in the common thing with our community somebody else gave Spruce something that he was looking at so i guess it it, it chirped up his day you know yeah and uh so with the negative there came the positive but you're gonna get those idiots anywhere you go anyways yep um there was a smaller exhibit that that i think could have its own area that bit that that little museum booth oh yeah the king tut i think that yeah no 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 the um the video game one the pack oh, family, oh the pack family yes 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 because it was funny because i mean i had a bunch of those things in that room yeah but it was i mean i still own but it was just kind of neat to see if there see some of the other stuff maybe next time maybe have like something like that active mm -hmm. with a little bit more interactive exhibit or something um, like I said, the panels were, were spot on. There was something for everybody up there. And you know um, what? I even got a little interactive with one of the panels at the end of it. Remember that little one that, uh, oh, uh, bootleg games are not that bad. I kind of yeah. went in there and, you know, started talking like this. <laughs> you know, the, the usual Joker shenanigans. That's eh, because you're a weirdo. Um, well, you know, aren't we a li all in, the, in in our <laughs> own various ways? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, in the bootleg game, what, what's interesting about that is it just uh, there's more and more people starting to get into it, but it's like yeah. there's just so many avenues you can go with on bootleg games. Oh, I mean, of course. There's the, the ones that were, what I say, like a more intellectual approach to modding an existing game to make it more funny or entertaining do as a as an enthusiast patch to fix something that was broken in the game yeah but then there's the other side that you've seen me collect over the years and play around with it which is that like the famicom lived on so much longer in like china and eastern european countries i mean that that console made it all the way throughout the 90s or early 2000s yeah and the some of the, the weird games that you can get from east like I, that batch I got from Poland that was pretty bizarre. Uh -huh. uh, I like that. I got that one bootleg of a uh, Contra where you punch into certain. That was. A... All right, you kind of faded out for a second. Can you get back to the certain part where you punch in something? Hey, you just punch in a code, and you can get into any part of Contra with any weapon. Nice. That was a pretty interesting mod. That's convenient. And then, uh, so I mean, that, that, so those those games are pretty cool. Um, there was a little bit more for you there, the toy stuff, but then you didn't you didn't go to the toy one that I went to, which was True. really ironic. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I I, I I did have my moments. I mean, I I figure, I think my best moment for me was uh, talking to retro rick and chris in their panel you know where i brought up like hey you know i i sold my sega cd collection to jumpstart my convention and the way i see it you know if i ever wanted to collect them again hey whatever but what matters most importantly is that the memories i have of me beating those games and then playing them all all over again when I wanted to, that stays in my mind. That's forever until your mind finally fades out. So, uh, yeah, yeah. you can still relive a lot of that stuff if oh, you Oh, uh, of course. But, like, you know, I've never had the necessity to, like, sit down and let's say, you know, oh, yeah, I'll listen to some of the music from Snatcher every once in a while. But I just don't have the, the need to go back and beat it again. No, what I'm saying, though, is, like, you... You can always grab a mister and then build it out and then put all your games on the mister. 
Oh yeah. And then it's it, something that's that that's half the size of your gear, a third the size of your GameCube, you can have all those games on it, and you're running it with an FPGA, so there's no timing difference or anything. I mean, there's just uh, and that's what's neat. Like, I mean, hopefully by this time next year, I'd have a, I'll have a Mister to play with. Yeah. That, but those boards went up you, over a hundred dollars a board. Now they went from like a one and a half to two and a half just for the board. So you think that's going to be your next purchase? Getting one of those? It, 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 I would like it to be because for if you build one out, mm -hmm. like I fucking build it out, you know, to the rails, you can still get a really really nice one for less than the cost of a current console. They're right about the cost of a current console, but you can play so many more games on it, so many more consoles on one device. Yeah. I mean, for 450 bucks, I think you can get one that you can do everything from gaming's beginnings all the way up to now. I think they're getting up to Saturn. Oh, that's some convenient. Dreamcast even with some company. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, and you know, you put a nice solid state hard drive on there. I mean, you can, although not just the game consoles, you can also do the the computer systems. You know, like the the Tandy color computer, yeah, yeah. for instance, or you know, uh, you want to do a ZX Spectrum or something like that. So there's so much neat things that you can do. That's why I laugh when some of these people are like, they're getting bored with uh -huh. video gaming, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. I've been here from the very beginning to where we are now, and I still can't get bored. I still find something neat and interesting to do. So oh, of course, and you know, me to a certain extent, I've seen, you know. I was alive when the 2600 was a thing. Oh, I still remember saying the 2600 at G Fox is in Hartford on the ninth floor. How ah, I remember the G ninth Fox. floor. I have no idea. Yeah, that, that, that was the tall one, right? That had Fox on it? Yeah. The, the text? Yep. Man. And that I, was I, a... What happened to that building? Because just one time when, when, when my pops would drive by down there in the highway, it was gone. No, no, the building is still there. It's okay. just, um, it looks a little bit different because they're using it as part of it as a uh, Yukon, I think. Oh, okay, There's, that uh, makes sense. Business was, I think, like, um, of the building. Uh-huh. And then, and, but I'm sure there's some empty floors up there. I wonder what's on some of those floors. Oh, I see. Well, uh, any last-minute things that you would like to say before we, uh, you know, get going and perhaps play some video games? Just get out there and you know go out to these cons check them out they're they're not expensive like if you order online for retro world you get both days for 40 bucks i yeah. mean and considering how much fun you have for me i mean it's also pretty neat because i bump into so many friends of that it, i don't get to see a lot throughout the year so it's a lot of other collectors that know me now or like sneak up behind me and say jonathan you know and it, it's pretty cool <laughs> to bump into some of your friends and everything so yeah man you know that was that's pretty cool. So definitely get out there, support your cons, see what's going on locally, and uh, don't forget the uh, smaller places that are not just the retro game stores, but the like we have are privileged to have a couple of uh, barcades over here. That is correct. We've got the one in Hagen, we've got the one in Southington. Support these guys because they're the ones that are helping support our you know our retro gaming had it too, and uh, we're putting up a bit of the full retro connected in Southington. With which is a whole wall. Now, hold on, hold on. Loop, loop back a bit because yep. you were in skip mode. Because that's important okay. what you're um, talking about right there. Well, it's a whole wall machines. And then, you know, they have a few dozen cape machines around rotating. They've got a storage facility or something, but. You know, so it's a fun, a fun time to be had by everybody. So support the small guys as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, all right, guys. Thank you all for uh, listening to this podcast. It's going to be up on my channel. If you hear this on uh, Twitch or possibly YouTube, you know, say hello and uh, possibly meet up with us at a convention. And, you know, we'll get to hang out and game hunt for some video games. Why not? Let's have some fun. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.